Jesus is the light that shineth in me. I wonder if you can say that the light of Jesus is in you. Oh, come on, don't pull my leg now. I wonder if you can say that the light of Jesus is in you. Oh, hallelujah. I'll just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm shining, I'm shining, I'm... Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, y'all act like y'all didn't come to have church this morning. I wonder if I got some people in the house that are blinging this morning. I wonder if I got some people in the house that are shining this morning. Oh, my. Ah, oh my God. I believe that Jesus said that we are to let our light so shine so that men may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Oh, push your neighbor and tell your neighbor, turn your light on! It's time to let your light shine so that people can see that there is deliverance. So that people can see that there is still a true and living God. Oh my God. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if your batteries that ran a little low, that's why we got the charging altar. Oh my God. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, first, we give an honor to God the Father and our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. We thank God for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost because without the Holy Ghost, we wouldn't have a mind to be in the house of worship. Am I right about it? We do give honor to the chairman of our deacon's ministry, Deacon David Mutry the deacon's ministry as a whole. We give honor to the beautiful mother of our church, Mother Hutchison. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, the deaconess ministry, we give honor to all of the ministers that have graced the pulpit here with me and those that are in the audience. We honor you all on today. Amen. And each and every one of you in your respective place. But last but not least, we give honor Hallelujah. To the glaze in my donuts. <laughs> to that thick brown gravy. <laughs> on a bed of white rice. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> the cinnamon on my cinnamon bun. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Cream in my coffee. Hallelujah. The stew in my chicken. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Lady Miller, come on and give her a hand. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to those that are watching us live via social media, we honor you all on today. Amen. God bless you. We would like to see you in the house here sometime soon. Amen. Amen. There is a word in the house on this morning. If you would, grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. And go with me to the gospel according to John. The gospel according to John chapter 15. We're going to read in your presence <clears throat> verses 17 through 21, the gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 17 through 21. When you get it, if you would, uh, stand upon your feet, please, and say, I got it, Pastor Miller. 
All right, I don't think we all got it yet. Hallelujah. Once again, the gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 17 through 21. When you got it, receive it by saying amen. Amen. Listen what Jesus says here in verse 17 through 21. He says, these things I command you, that ye love one another. He says, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. He says, if, you, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world... But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Listen to what he said in verse number 20. He says, remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. And verse number 21, he says, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. The word of God to the people of God. And I want to talk to you this morning from the subject it's not your fault that you're hated. It's not your fault that you are hated. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And I want to use for a subtopic this morning and and I want you to just look at your neighbor. Y'all know how I am. I like for the church to participate in the sermon. So I want you to just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's favor, God's favor provokes, provokes enemies. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, just, 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 just grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor. It's not your fault. It's, your fault. it's, the, favor it's the favor of God that's making them mad. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I wish I had somebody that would receive that today. It is not your fault. They're mad at you simply because of the grace of God that is on your life. In other words, you didn't do nothing wrong. I don't care what they're trying to accuse you of, but you didn't do anything wrong. Now God told me that, that there's about a there's about hundred of you in here that need to hear that. Because you have been blaming yourself for all of the attacks that is coming against you. But God sent me this morning to tell you that it's not your fault. It's not your fault. I'll just tell your neighbor, say, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. You didn't do nothing wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. It's simply because of your connection with Jesus. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house. I wish I had somebody in the house that, 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 that is really receiving what God is saying. Because listen now, you've been, you've been, you've been beating yourself up. too much and for far too long 
God wants you to know this morning that you didn't do anything wrong. The only thing that you did was just loved him. And when you loved him, then you provoked them to anger and to be jealous of you. Oh, push somebody and say, it's because of his favor. It's because of his favor. That's all. Listen to me now. Yahweh sent me this morning to help and to encourage you all. He told me to let you all know that, listen, it is not your fault for all of the negative attacks that are coming against you. He said it's because of our connection with him is why we are hated by those that are of the world. Now, I want you to understand now, my purpose this morning is not to get you all riled up with animosity towards the world. Because we were once like them. And if it wasn't for God's grace, we would still be like them. I believe Paul said in Ephesians 2, Paul says that we were dead in our trespass and sins in which we formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the sons of disobedience. Amen. See, we must bear in mind that even though the world hates us, this is the very same satanic system from which we have been saved and delivered from. So listen now, so as we examine Jesus' words and, and his explanation of why the world hates us from today's text, I believe that we will understand more clearly why we should have more compassion and why we should love our enemies even more so that they might see Christ in us and be saved. Hallelujah, somebody. Just tell your neighbor one more time, say, neighbor, neighbor. It's, not it's not your fault. Oh, hallelujah. I want to just visit the text just for a minute. Listen now, now as we dive into today's text, remember, this is the section of our Lord's farewell address to his disciples just hours before his betrayal and his trial, his torture, and ultimately crucifixion. And yet, knowing all of this, listen, he still ministers unto his disciples. In verse 15, uh, in, in chapter 15, verse 1 through 16, listen, he reminded them of the astonishing riches that they will enjoy because of their uh, vital union with him. And he did this through using an allegory of the vine and the branches. But here in verse 17 through 21, he warns them about the oppositions that they are about to experience from the world. And as we examine his words, we're going to be able to answer the question why the world hates true believers. And it also will remind us as we go through this text, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that there is a high cost for following Jesus. But I want you to understand that the glory far outweighs the difficulties and the troubles. Am I right about it? Listen now, listen now, from uh, this particular text this morning, Jesus is going to give us three reasons why the world hates us. But I want you to notice what Jesus says in verse number 17 before he told his disciples the reasons of why the world hates them. Listen now. The idea is that because the world's hostility towards Christ 
and all who belong to him, what Jesus does is Jesus in verse number 17, he repeats the instructions that he gave them in verse 10 and 12. In verse 17, he says, this I command you, that you love one another. Now this statement not only serves as a contrast to the world's enmity towards true believers, but it also reminds us of how desperately we need each other in the midst of this battle. Am I right about it? See, listen, church, I am so tired of the schisms in the body of Christ. And oftentimes, these schisms, what they do is they result into broken fellowships and they also result into church hurt. And most of the times now, these schisms, they spring up because of non-essential things. Sometimes it's just somebody being jealous about this or being jealous or upset about that. And then sometimes it's just something personal or some personal preference that have not been met. In other words, it's usually little simple things that cause schisms in the church. But listen, listen, people of God, listen, you tell me now, and I want you to think about this, you tell me what soldier wants to be at odd with his fellow soldiers when surrounded by the enemy. Y'all, y'all, y'all understand? You tell me what soldier, you, you, you just point me in the direction of a soldier that, that loves being uh, 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 in the battlefield with his fellow soldiers and, and knowing that they got odds against one another, but then they are surrounded by the enemy. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. What are, what are you trying to say? Listen, how can we possibly fight the enemy if we're fighting amongst each other? So Jesus, before he gave them the reasons of why the world hates them, he tells them, he says, listen now, this command I give unto you, you got to love one another. Because we are on a battlefield where the world and those of the world, they hate us. They are plotting every day to try to demean the believers. They are plotting every day to try to trip up my brothers and my sisters in Christ. And now they're strategizing a plan to, 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 to overtake us, and here we are, we're fighting against one another. How can we even fight on the battlefield when we are at odds with one another? And the devil is so deceitful and conniving and so tricky he sometimes throws the bone uh, and he gets you all riled up and stirred up and then he sits on the sideline. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me in this house. I'm gonna talk to myself. I'm gonna preach to myself. I'm gonna preach to myself here. I'm gonna preach to myself. Y'all listen now, listen, listen. That's what he do. He stands on the sideline and he waits on us to implode. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. He waits on us. He, he looks for us to go ahead and devour one another because by us doing this, he has accomplished his goal. So Jesus gives this command before he tells them the reasons why the world hates them. 
Jesus tells them, he said, listen now, you're going to have to love one another. Because Jesus knew that he was about to leave them. He knew that he was about to now go to be crucified. He knew that after crucifixion, there would be three days in the grave and then he would rise from the dead and then from there, he would walk the earth for 40 days and then ascend into the heavens. So he knew that his time was coming where he couldn't walk in the flesh beside them. So he said, now listen now, you saw how they hated me. He says, now they're going to hate you even the more simply because you were connected with me. So what I need y'all to do is come together in love and in unity because that's the only way that you're going to be able to overcome what the devil is trying to throw at you. And Jesus wanted them to know, he wanted them to know, now listen, don't take it personal when they talk about you. Don't take it personal when they scandalize your name. Don't take it personal when they're throwing all kind of fiery dots at you because Jesus wanted them to know. Oh, touch your neighbor, it's not your fault. It's not your fault, it's not your fault. So, about their hatred towards me. If you would, if you would, if you would, please do this for me. Uh, if you would, right in the vicinity of where you're sitting, I want you to just find three people that's sitting in close vicinity with you and say, and say neighbor, neighbor. I'm, not your enemy. I'm not your enemy. I love you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, mean that, mean that now, mean that now, mean that now. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, find three people and tell them, say, neighbor, I'm not your enemy, but I love you. Yes. My, 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 my. Oh, hallelujah. That's what it's all about. It's all about love. Yes, yes. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Now, 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 I told you to find three people in your vicinity. Now you all over the church. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, but touch somebody and say, that's what love do, pastor. That's what love, that's what love do. Love will carry you past boundary lines. Look, love is unlimited. Oh, my God. Woo. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Come on, come on, come on. Take your seat, please, please. I got to gotta get out of here. Okay, you see, love still got you out your seat. Look at that. <laughs> so Jesus then gives three reasons why the world hates us. In verse number 19, he says, the world hates us because we are not of this world. In other words, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We're not conformed to the things of this world, but we have been transformed by the renewings of our mind. Tell your neighbor, so we're not of the world. We're not of the world. That's why. That's why they hate us. Number two, in verse 20, Jesus tells us, they hate us because we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Have you ever noticed that you can go all over the place and even when it comes to uh, the media, they can talk about all these other religions and they got nice things to say about these other religions. But when it comes wow. to Christ, they want us to stop talking about Jesus. Even when it comes to public praying, they want us to end our prayer in his name. His name, man, cut it out. When I was in the, the work field some years ago, I was asked to do a prayer for the breakfast that we were having in our office. And I was told that if I could, please, just don't say Jesus. I did a Scooby-Doo moment. <laughs> you sure you're talking about me? <laughs> and I told them that there's no way. Well, you know, all you can do, all you can say just in his name because you know who you, no, no, I want everybody to know who I'm praying to. <laughs> and when I made that prayer, I started it in the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Bless now this food for the upkeep and nourishment of our bodies. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Now, 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 they didn't ask me to pray no more. But that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. <laughs> and I even was, 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 was disliked a little bit because of that, was hated because of that. But Jesus told me, son, it's not your fault. They're gonna hate you simply because you love me. So number two is because we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three is found in verse number 21. Listen, finally he tells us, he says, the world hates us because they don't know the one who sent Jesus. In other words, because they don't know God. So that's why they hate us. Oh my God. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that you are hated. And as I was preparing this sermon, listen, God gave me a revelation and, and oh my God, I got to share this revelation with you. You know, I just outlined the three reasons, but there is a primary reason why the world hates us. Y'all wanna know? You sure you wanna know? Oh, hallelujah. Listen, see what Jesus is saying in today's text is that all this hatred towards us is because of Yahweh's unconditional sovereign election, which is a doctrine that the world really hates. See, people, listen, uh, people have uh, been uh, by nature uh, extremely committed to self-determination. In Luke 4, listen, when Jesus announced his ministry as the Son of Man to his Jewish kinfolk, he also explained to the synagogue worshipers that God has compassion on whom he chooses. And listen now, when he told them that, they became ballistic. 
Why would you say that, Pastor Miller? Because simply in verse number 28 of Luke 4, Luke 4, it says that, and all in the synagogue were filled with rage as they heard these things. And they rose up and cast him out of the city and led him to the top of the hill on which their city had been built. And listen what they were going to do. They were going to throw him down over the cliff. You said, well, Pastor Miller, but uh, help me please to understand. Well, well, let me unpack it even in more simple terms. The revelation that God gave me for the primary reason is found in the B clause of verse number 19. Please, I hope you're writing it down. This is the primary reason why the world hates us so much. Listen what Jesus says in verse number 19. He says, if ye were of the world. He said the world would love his own. But listen at the B clause. He says, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you. Out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. You say, well, Pastor Miller, then what is the primary? Because I missed it again. Well, the revelation is this. The world hates us simply because we have been chosen of God. In other words, what are you trying to say, Pastor Miller? You didn't choose God. God chose you. Even before you were born, while you were in your mother's womb, God had already chosen that you were going to be his child. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house. I wish I had a witness in the house. Oh, my God. Some are saying that, well, Pastor Miller, no, no, that ain't so. That ain't so. So you telling me that you believe in a gospel of predestination? Yes. It was preordained that you would be saved. Somebody will get that in a minute. Somebody will get that. It's been preordained that you would even be here today. Oh, y'all still ain't with me. Y'all still ain't with me. Uh, why would you say that, Pastor Miller? Because God don't live in time. God lives in eternity. So God knows the past. God knows the present. And God knows the future. You say, but, 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 Pastor, but, Pastor, you're trying to tell me that I had nothing to do with my salvation? No, I'm telling you that. You had a little bit. Come on. Come on. Just, a, just a little teeny bit. That's all, just a little teeny bit. Because you had to make a confession. But let me tell you why you made the confession. Because God knew the right buttons to push. Oh, I wish I had somebody in the house today. He knew what's go what was going to get you down and load a bar to where you're down on your knees and nobody's there to help you and you're searching for some help. He knew that when he gets you there, my God, he knew that once he gets you in a certain position, that the only thing that you know to do is say, Jesus, help me. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. You've been chosen. That's why they hate you. The world is saying, why did God choose him? <laughs> All of 
the stuff that he done did. He done been out there selling drugs and he done been out there repping and running. He done been out there in prison. Why God chose Why did he choose him? You know why he chose me? Because he knew me. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. He knew my heart. He knew my mind. And he knew. That once he put me in a situation to where I have to cry out to him. He knew, Sister Michelle, that I was going to be loyal. He knew that I was going to love him. He knew that I was going to trust him. He... Oh my God. Oh, push your name and say, how, how, how good does God know you? Uh, how well does he know you? I gotta go. So yeah, I believe in predestination because God knows it all. He's omnipotent. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. He can do all things but fail. So I was chosen before I was even a twinkle in my daddy's eye. Everything that I have done on this earth, God ordained it to be done. God has a perfect will, and then he has a permissive will. And sometimes we fall in the permissive will of God, and whenever you fall in the permissive will of God, then your purpose is on pause. Somebody right now is living in pause. That's why nothing will happen because you're in pause right now. You're in God's permissive will. And right now you need a realignment. Yo, 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 live a road in your car and uh, you need a front wheel alignment. Uh, look at somebody and say, that's a rough ride. That's a rough ride. That's a rough ride. You got to take that thing to the mechanic shop and get a realignment. Oh, but push your neighbor and say, you're in the mechanic shop right now. Oh, just let God realign you back into. All right, I got to go. My God. I'll tell you, neighbor, for the, la for, for, for the second to the last time, say, say neighbor, <laughs> it's not your fault. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You tell that neighbor again, say, neighbor. Say, God's favor provokes enemies. Oh, hallelujah. What are you trying to say? Well, well, let me, let me just close this thing out because I'm, I'm, I'm getting so overheated up here. Uh, uh, because God is moving in this house. Listen, listen, I'm telling you that the revelation of the hatred that is against us is because we have been chosen of God. Peter even makes it clear in Peter 2 and 9, Peter says, but we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, so why are you walking around with your head hung down? 
Why are you sweating because they hate you? Oh, push your neighbor and say, let your hater be your elevator. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Listen, 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 listen. Oh, this is what Peter said. Peter said that we are peculiar people. That we should show forth the praise of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Please hear me today, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's not your fault that you hate it. God's favor provokes enemies. Listen, listen, listen. Even uh, Paul tells us, listen, that we're going to go through some things. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9, he says that we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. He said that we are perplexed, but not in despair. He said that we are persecuted, but not abandoned. He said every once in a while we get struck down, but we're not destroyed. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. I'm trying to tell you that sometimes what God does is God sometimes uses our haters to elevate us to the next season. Sometimes God will use the haters of this world just to motivate us to get up. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes we're in places that we have no business being. And God got to make it uncomfortable for us for us to leave. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. What are you trying to say? Well, I'm telling you that, listen, Yahweh will take the roadblocks from our enemies and turn them into stepping stones for you and I. And even King David, he says this, he says in Psalms 34 and 19, he said that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of all of them. As I close, what I'm trying to tell you is, listen now, don't let the world get under your skin. Don't let the world make you get into your emotions. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Listen, listen, listen. You don't have to respond to everything that they're throwing at you. That's some of our problem. we responding to everything the world throws at us, and we got to understand that the contempt is not against you. You have nothing to do with it. It's because that you have been chosen. Hallelujah. I don't know how we get. Somebody getting on our last nerve? What you're not going to do is. <laughs> you didn't mess with the right one now. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? You got to stop responding to that. <laughs> yeah, they tried it, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Well, let them keep trying it because it ain't got nothing to do with you. I got to go. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And I want you to remember this as I close. And please let this penetrate in your heart and digest it in your spirit. Listen, the hatred that you are experiencing is only coming your way to certify that you've been chosen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
In other words, I got my license for being chosen. Why? Because the world hate me. Why? Because they're talking about me. Why? Because they're backbiting against me. Why? Because they're gossiping against me. Oh, touch yourself and say, that's my certification. <laughs> that I've been chosen. Come on and give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God on today for what he has given us through his word, letting us know that it's not our fault. And the primary reason for the hatred that we are experiencing is because we've been chosen. And sometimes that hatred comes within your house. And you know why? Because everyone in your house ain't saved. Oh, hallelujah. 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 But you want to show them love so that they can be compelled to receive the salvation of God. Hallelujah. After hearing such a message like this on today, we might have one in the congregation that wants to give your life to Jesus. We're not asking you at this moment to join the church, but we're asking you to give your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul to Jesus on today. The Bible declares in John 3 that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Scripture also says that except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he will not be able to enter into God's kingdom. What I'm telling you today that if you're not sure that you have a relationship with Jesus, I'm asking you to come and give your life to Christ today. He's waiting on you. He's already preordained that you would be saved. Now the part that you play in salvation is you have to yield and confess. So there might be one in the building today that have not yet yielded and have not yet confessed. There might be someone that is watching us live via social media and you've heard this call for discipleship. And if you're watching us, if you would, just uh, repeat this short and simple prayer after me. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. Please God, forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me now from all unrighteousness. Now God, I confess that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that he died and you raised him from the dead. And therefore, I thank you, God, for saving me. Come on and give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. If you repeated that prayer after me and you're watching us live via social media, today your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now born again. If you would, just leave us a comment in the comment section and one of our social media administrators will reach out to you immediately. God bless you and we love you all.